All right, so for this one, we're going to be getting the return type of a function similar to what we did before getting the parameters. And in, in fact, the solution might be almost the same. We're going to implement this return type function, but it's already provided by TypeScript. It's a generic that you get out of the box in like one of the built ins. So just looking at the example here, we have a function that takes in a Boolean and returns one or two, depending on whether the Boolean is true. So the return type of this function is the union of one and two. Let's take the challenge. So, all right, here we go. Complex objects. So, all right, that's some complex object. And we see we have all of our errors. So let's go through them real quick. So fun fn is a function that takes a Boolean as an argument. And oh, this is exactly the same one we were just looking at before. And fn1 takes a Boolean. And also the second thing it takes is an any, some w argument that's not used, I guess. Um, OK. So we're trying to see here if these things are equal string and the return type of a function that returns string fine one, two, three, a function that returns one, two, three complex object and a thing that returns it. So we see we have a pattern here, uh, promise uh, uh, resolving to a Boolean uh, function return type, a function returning a function. Wow. Already and getting started with the functional programming stuff. All right, Rob. All right. So what do you think? How would you go about solving this? So much like the parameters type, we want to clamp down our uh, our type parameter to just functions. So let's okay. uh, let's make this accept any kind of function, an unknown number of arguments, and an unknown return type. Okay. So um, I'll break this onto a new line. Cool. Right. So now if we say uh, we're we're going to use the conditional types again. So if we do since args unknown, mm -hmm. and then much like the parameters, we're going to infer from the return. Uh, okay. Return for r and return r if that matches, and never if it does not. Sweet. I'll format them for us here. Okay. Great. Oh, interesting. So here, uh huh. Returns. So we get an error. Um, type of function. Uh, this guy is an is a union returning one or two. Got it. All right. All right. So what do you think? So it does not satisfy the constraint args unknown. Mm hmm. It's unknown. So right, unknown because is not simple to boolean. Let's go up to function. It takes yeah. So I, I think this has to be yes. any here. Yes, this is one situation where it has to be any. Um, and yep, now we're all passing. Um, I don't know quite why that is. Uh, mm. I did I did see this, though, when I went through these before. I think it's because it's a constant type here. Uh, mm -hmm. and not unknown. Oh, yeah, it can't extend unknown because it's known. I mean, maybe it can't because it's a union specifically. Well, let's check that. So we could do, uh, we could, we could just do, we could just flip it like that. Oh yeah. You want to do, make another case. That's fine. Yeah. Let's make another case. I'll set it. I'll set it up down here. Um, FN two. What is yours going to, was it going to return one or two? It returns an unknown. Oh, it returns an unknown. Okay. Um, uh, all right, great. Uh -huh. What if we do this? Uh, if I could spell K N O W N. Yep, still, still doesn't work. Ah, uh, well, the arguments are not unknown here. Yeah, the return was never a problem. It was unknown all along. So if I remove the explicit type, works fine. Mm -hmm. Because the argument type is unknown. Mm -hmm. Let me show you some. Okay, so I'm going to blow away the code that we just wrote. We'll figure, we'll see if we found one that matches. Here are some of the things that I found online. So this is one of the main examples that people use. Notice in this example, they didn't constrain T. That's because you don't technically have to to make these specific tests pass. But I like what you did there, Rob, and it, it is definitely a good idea because, of course, something called my return type is expecting to receive a function. And this one looks like pretty much identical to what I guess we have... Uh, you can put unknown there, um, but other than that, it's identical to to what you had above. Um, this one here is also kind of interesting. You can do args never, 
Uh, not sure why that is, but um, maybe someone can illuminate it's it for because us. the uh, arguments don't actually matter for the constraint. Just it's a function type. Just saying like that it has arguments. So it's funny that never is is okay here, but unknown fails. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Here, here's here's two that were nopes. These don't work. Uh, this one is saying I'm only expecting a function that doesn't have any arguments, and so for that reason, it will fail the constraint. Right. And this one is the one that we looked at, saying uh, having unknown otherwise. But otherwise, there. I mean, the the body of these is all pretty much the same. But it comes down to like how you define the constraints. It can be good to think about that stuff. Sometimes it's useful to just leave them sort of open, like this one does here. That solves it. Uh, it just depends on what kind of API you're trying to go for and how strict you want to be about about what inputs you allow. So, any other thoughts on this one, Rob? Yeah, the constraints can be pretty useful too when you want to control where the compiler is going to err, mm, or if you yeah. want it to compile to compile in one place but not another. Definitely. Yep. Awesome. Cool. All right. 